Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Spit of Justice. We are in the middle of talking with our client, Ellen Wyatt, uh, about her time traveling adventures, which this is Ace Attorney. We're kind of rooted into mostly reality, so there has to be a trick behind this time traveling, uh, cause do 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 that thing that she is talking about, which we, I guess we will find out later on. But we're still talking to her, so let's talk about the wedding. So you and Larry here were never planning on getting married, right? That's right. We've only had a few brief interactions, so I can't say I know him at all. Oh, Ellie. How can you say that? You and me are bound by fate, I'm telling you. We're meant to be together! I've never been so right, baby. It's as plain as the goatee on my chin. Larry, don't make me send you to time out. <laughs> now, can you tell me about the groom, Ellen? What's he like? An iron? What is she ironing? His name is Soren Sprocket. Oh, he's the most wonderful man. He is truly... My destiny. Did you say Soren Sprocket? As in... That's right. The next president of Sprocket Aviation. Where did she get the shirt? Wait, he's in line to take over the company? Ah! Hm. He's nothing but a rich, spoiled brat. I'm clearly the better choice. Clearly! Larry, you and Soren are as different as night and day. There is no comparison. Ellie, you're breaking my achy, breaky heart! So she's marrying into money, huh? I can't believe Soren chose me, a simple house servant. He's my knight in shining armor, my prince. Oh, oh, my Soren. Marrying into money can be a very ugly business. So, what's this shadowy figure you saw, Ellen? It was... It was when Mr. Gloomsbury was attacking me. <laughs> right after I made a wish upon this pendant, I started to pass out. But just then, just as I lost consciousness, I saw somebody strike Mr. Gloomsbury from behind. <laughs> You... you did? Then that person... must be the true culprit. Did you see who it was? I'm afraid not. Have you told anybody else about this? I told some of my in-laws, but nobody took me seriously. They said it was all just a dream. I can't exactly say I blame them. I mean... time travel? Larry, for my peace of mind, please tell me that you- that figure wasn't you. Of course it wasn't! Well, that's good. <laughs> that's one less issue! I guess I've asked her all I can for now. Speak and span. Speak and span. Um, Ellen? What are you doing? I want to make everything clean and beautiful for when Soren comes. I can't have my future hubby come into a dirty room now, can I? It has to be spotless, just like this white dress! Speak and span, speak and span. Let's hope we can wipe away all suspicion from you soon, too. Nick, we'd better get to the crime scene right away. What? You're coming too? Of course I am. Larry Butts is your sidekick. Hmm. If I solve the crime and reveal the true killer with my super sleuthing skills, Ellie might change her mind about me, you know? Of course it's for Ellie. 
You never get the message, do you, Larry? Next stop, the mooring dock in Sprocket Park. Come on, Nick, let's go! <laughs> Larry, please. Give it a rest, boy. Alright, let's move the mooring dock. Ooh! The flying chapel? Is that a flying pig with rainbow wings? I, I can't tell. So this is Sprocket Park. But where's the reception hall? The reception hall? Oh, that's... Wow, looky there! What? what What is it? I just spotted me a cute mamacita. Don't wait up, Nick! Wow, so quick to be over with Ellen! Hold on! Where's the reception hall? Sorry, Nick. A man's gotta stop and smell the roses when they appear. I am an artist, after all. Oh, miss! You! An artist or a con artist? Ugh, I thought he was going to take me to the crime scene. Oh well, I'm sure he'll come slinking back when is inevitably when he inevitably gets rejected. I'll just take a quick look around until then. Let's do that for the time being. What the heck happened here? So this bench hit that sign, huh? Hopefully, I didn't hit a person too. That would be a catastrophe. I guess from now on, whenever I'm walking around outside. I better be on the lookout for unidentified flying furniture, too. <laughs> wow, this thing really- this thing's really banged up. You looking at the sign? They say it got damaged by heavy winds yesterday. A big gust sent the bench flying into it. Well, that's what they're saying, anyway. Uh, I see. The wind caused that? More like a tornado. <laughs> The repair guy was saying, don't touch, it's dangerous. I see. Thanks for the heads up. Poor guy, looks like it was a lot of work. Wow, that airship is huge! Oops, didn't mean to say that out loud. I've only ever seen airships like this up in the sky. But I've gotta say, they're mighty impressive when you see them up close like this. Hey, sorry about that. I actually thought you'd be back sooner. Didn't work out, huh? Lay off, man. I wasn't on my game today. So now that you're done, you mind telling me where the reception hall is already? What do you mean? It's right there in front of you. Huh? Right in front of... Wait. What's that say? Flying Chapel? It's in big giant letters! Do you mean to tell me... Yep. Ellie's reception was on that airship. Whoa! A sky-high reception hall? Yep. And that's where you'll find the crime scene. Man, not only does that airship fly through the sky, but the space-time continuum, too! But the happy couple's honeymoon got left far behind when it made that time skip, though. Here, check the airship out for yourself with this pamphlet. Uh, thanks for the map! By the way, I figured you could use some backup, so I called in some help for you. Who'd you call in? You did? Yep, should be here any minute now. Excuse me. <laughs> Edgewood? The only person with a car I can think of! It's a red sports car! Th that red sports car? Larry, don't tell me you called. You know it, buddy! Of course it's Edgeworth. I trust you've been well, right? <laughs> or it's Maya! Whoops! I thought it was friggin' Edgeworth! Surprise! Now admit it, that was a pretty good Mr. Edgeworth impression, wasn't it? 
I bet it was a good Edgeworth impression because that was me. Oops. M Maya, what are you doing here? Larry called me up. He said something about it finally being time for him to tie the old knot. But that's funny. I'm pretty sure he mentioned something about being here with his bride. <laughs> Maya, I know this is sudden, but please marry me! N Nick? What's Larry talking about? He was dumped by his bride. Well, by his imaginary bride, anyway. <laughs> wow. Poor Larry. That's a new low even for him. But hey! Imaginary girlfriends never hurt anyone, right? More power to him! <laughs> this is Maya Fey. She's been abroad for her training as a spirit medium. But now that her training is over, she's back home here in the States. That's right! The new and improved Maya Fey is on the scene! Spirit and girl power at the ready! <laughs> Look at you, Maya. All grown up and as cute as ever. Oh, you know what? I just realized something. If I ever got married, I'd miss out on all the fun of meeting somebody new. I see you haven't changed a bit, Larry. Now this is Edgeworth! Oh. E Edgeworth? I figure that car belonged to you. But when did you become Maya's chauffeur? It's nothing like that. I just happened to run into her in route and picked her up. And by run into her, I mean she jumped out in front of my car. I nearly ran her down. Oops! Maya, please! This is Miles Edgeworth. He's a friend of mine, and a district chief's prosecutor. I heard he's been busy lately. I'm sure he has been! So, what brings you here? Wait. Don't tell me Larry called you up, too. He did. However, I have business of my own here at the crime scene. Business? What kind of business? We're gonna find out in a short... in a second. I'm going to present my badge first. There doesn't seem to be any rust on that badge. But can the same be said of its owner? Of course! I'm practically rust-proof. <laughs> Let's hope you stay that way. What's that supposed to mean, Edgeworth? Huh? Alright, let's talk to him. <laughs> the incident. Just so you know, right, I am the lead prosecutor on this case. What? You? Yes. It appears we'll be standing on opposite ends on the battlefield this time around. So I'll be up against Edgeworth tomorrow. But I don't get it, Edgeworth. What about this case warrants the personal attention of the district chief prosecutor? That's a good question. It's a bit complicated, to say the least. In what way? The groom is a member of the Sprockets, a family with immense influence. It's as if his bride were to stand trial in court, it would sully the Sprocket name. So they tried to apply some pressure on the prosecutor's office. Pressure to settle it amicably, right? What do you mean, settle it amicably? It means that they're trying to sweep this whole thing under the rug. Wow. Sprocket Aviation really has that much clout? Yes, they have especially strong ties in both the political and the judicial worlds. To the point where no one dares to oppose them. Don't tell me that includes you. Don't be ridiculous, Fright. It's quite the opposite. The prosecutor's office is filled with cowards, as I found out. Every last one of my subordinates was both loath to prosecute a sprocket. Was loath, excuse me. So that's why you decided to take on the case yourself, right? That's right. I will personally see to it that justice is served. 
I've always prosecuted to the utmost of my abilities, regardless of who I'm up against. For that is part of my creed. Nothing and no one can sway me from that. Not even the almighty sprockets. Th right. If they think they can use their influence to bend the truth, they have another thing coming. You know, I almost feel sorry for them. They were only trying to protect their interest. But all they got instead was you. <laughs> Edgy? Come on, man! How can you prosecute my poor sweet Ellie? What kind of heartless jerk are you? <laughs> I'm simply doing my job. And I'm warning you, Wright. I won't hold back, not for you or anyone else. Thanks for the warning, your righteousness. <laughs> what up, Edgeworth? So, how's it going, Mr. Chief Prosecutor? Busy as always, I presume? Of course. Unlike somebody who has too few clients and too much time on his hands. Huh? That guess that explains why your brow is more furled than the last time I saw you. Oh, The sick banter! Maybe you should learn to relax a little, Edgeworth. <laughs> nice try, right? But as always, I have no intention of showing anyone any mercy. Including you. As inflexible as ever, I see. Besides, I think I've mellowed out quite a bit. Mel I've I think I've mellowed out a bit with age. So if anything, those furrows should have smoothed out a little as well. <laughs> Honestly, Edgeworth, are you really that blind to yourself? <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> He's really self conscious about those lines, isn't he? <laughs> Edgeworth, about this incident. Don't forget, right? I'm the prosecutor for this case. Need I remind you that I'm not in the habit of sharing information with my adversaries? Okay, okay. N no. I guess we are adversaries for now. And you, Larry. M me? I'd like you to come with me. You have a lot to answer for after that little stunt you pulled with the suspect. But edgy! We're old pals, aren't we? Personal appeals won't work on me, Larry. Now come along. <laughs> Nick! Help me out here! Nope! Bye, Larry! We'll see you later. You'll be fine. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Is it just me, or is Mr. Edgeworth as relentless as ever? Maybe he's just excited because he gets to prosecute again. Yeah, I guess some things never change. So much for mellowing out. Well, Nick, we'd better hop to it, too. Hop to what? Investigating the crime scene, of course. What else? It's been a long time since you and I teamed up like this. This is gonna be fun. Aww. F fun huh? It has been a long time, though, since we were last together like this. Alright, to the crime scene, then. Yeah, and away we go! Before we away we go, we're going to present my badge! Your attorney's badge looks so nice and shiny on your lapel. It's so cool, like the mark of a true hero. If I can be a hero to my clients, that's good enough for me. In that case, I'll be the commander that controls the hero from behind the scenes. Wait, are you saying you've been manipulating me all this time? Go, Roborite! To the crime scene! <laughs> I guess that makes me a robo-lawyer? <laughs> Is there anything I can talk to her about? Oh, okay, cool. Might as well jump right in, I guess. So, what do you think? Well, let's see. I think the inside of Mr. Edgeworth's car smelled heavenly. No, no. Apart from Edgeworth's car. I mean, do you have any ideas about this case? Hmm. 
Sorry, I can't think of a thing. But what are we wasting all this time with thinking for? There's investigating to be done. Oh, I can't wait to see what kind of evidence we'll find. You seem really excited. You bet, Nick. The dynamic duo is back in the saddle again. Let's go round them up, partner. All right, so this game basically has done every single trope now with Maya. She has been kidnapped. She has been accused of murder. She's done spirit channeling, and she has done... Uh, now she's your partner. <laughs> Just every single thing on the book, in, in the book, on the, in this game. <laughs> All right, let's get to it then. So what do you think we should do, Maya? Isn't it obvious? We start by investigating every single place that has anything to do with the case. And then grill every single person involved. Her enthusiasm is kind of overwhelming. Now go forth, Phoenix Wright. Search out the truth. By a dog? <laughs> well, don't just stand there. Say something. Yes, ma'am? Louder! Yes, ma'am! That's more like it. <laughs> Maya is so precious, though. I love it. Alright, we're gonna go to the reception hall, and we might have to stop somewhere in the middle of this reception hall. We got about seven minutes left on the clock here. So this is the reception hall. According to the pamphlet, we're right here. Ooh, at the very top. Yikes, we're pretty high up. But at least we're indoors, so it doesn't seem so bad. Oh look, Nick! It's Emma! Hey, Emma! Over here! Mr. Wright, Maya, does this mean you've taken the case? Yeah. That's how things kind of turned out. So you do mind if we take a look around? <laughs> Be my guest. Uh, we've pretty much wrapped up our investigation, so go right on ahead. Now's a good chance to find out more about the case from Emma, too. But let's present our badge first. Is there something I can do to help you with that? Actually, I was hoping it would help me move my investigation along. Sorry, but that's not gonna do much for you here, I'm afraid. That's too bad. Aw, don't look so glum. You have to keep a positive outlook. Why don't you take a break with something sweet? I highly recommend snackoos myself. You want to try some? Um, no thanks. I appreciate the offer though. Suit yourself. You don't know what you're missing. <laughs> hey, look, just think about it this way, Emma. It's more for you. So what happened? Edgeworth wouldn't tell us anything about this case. So do you think you could give us a rundown? Well, seeing as he's going to be prosecuting, I'd expect him to be tight-lipped about it. The incident occurred yesterday on September 20th. It happened after the wedding reception, which lasted from 7pm to 10pm. 7pm to 10pm, huh? Got it. Um, by the way, you didn't hear about any time traveling or anything, did you? Time traveling? What do you mean? Oh, uh, nothing. Forget it. That's pretty much the response I expected. The victim's name is Dumas Gloomsbury. He was a servant in the Sprocket family household. Ellen was a maid for that family as well, so that means... The two of them were co-workers? Yes. They apparently knew each other. Mr. Gloomsbury was the lead servant, after all. He was very serious about his work, but he was also a very closed and private man. 
So, the other servants called him Mr. Doom and Gloom behind his back. If he was the lead servant, he must have been higher ranked than Ellen. What makes the police think Ellen killed this man? A guy who was essentially her boss. We don't know the defendant's motive yet. But the circumstances surrounding the discovery of the body don't bode well for her. And what circumstances are these, exactly? Well, some of her in-laws saw what looked like the immediate aftermath of the murder. The suspect was standing in front of the body with the murder weapon still in her hands. Well, that's not good. But why would a bride, who was just about to start a happy life, kill someone? Do the police have any explanation for that? Yeah, about that. They believe the victim attacked the suspect and was killed when she fought back. Self-defense? Well, why did he attack her to begin with? Well, a mere servant girl was suddenly going to be the wife of the future president. Mr. Gloomsbury must have been more than just a little jealous of her. So this Mr. Doom and Gloom attacked Ellen first? But if she was only trying to protect herself, wouldn't that count as justified self-defense on her part, Nick? It would. There's a good chance she'd be acquitted if we could prove that, but... I wonder what Edgeware will have up his sleeve to counter that claim. Yeah. But wow. A servant girl marrying the future president of such a huge company. It sounds like a modern day fairy tale. It does, doesn't it? Thing is... Not everyone was on board with their union, apparently. Alright, I think we only got time to talk about the murder weapon, so let's go there. So, what was the murder weapon, Emma? This clock with a secret mechanism built into it. It was on display here in the reception hall. The suspect was holding it when the murderer was discovered. So the victim was clubbed to death with this, huh? Well, that's funny. There's no blood on it, as far as I can tell. Maybe it was wiped off in an attempt to tamper with the evidence? Emma, I think you're the only person who will be able to figure that out, all things considered. But there was definitely a luminol reaction. Oh, there you go. And it matches up with the shape of the injury, so it's gotta be the murder weapon. What a funny looking clock. They call it the timekeeper. The idea is that it's a time machine. Every time the couple sees it, it'll bring them back to the memory of their wedding day. A time machine, huh? Come to think of it, Ellen said her pendant was part of a time machine. I wonder how the secret mechanism in this thing works. Uh, maybe I can keep going? Alright, we'll just finish this then. <laughs> the star-crossed marriage. The suspect never had any family or relatives to depend on, so she was working as a live-in maid for the Sprocket family to support herself. So a maid with no family or fortune was set to marry the president's son, huh? I guess it's not surprising that that ruffled a feather or two. Yes. Uh, apparently, the groom's parents and all of his other relatives were strongly opposed. But that didn't stop the young couple from deciding to go ahead with their wedding. Love flourishes in the face of adversity! Oh? Is that how it works? Yup! If you ever have any questions about love, just ask me. I'm a qualified expert. I spent all of my spare time in Korean watching soap operas on TV. I'm not sure that's enough to make you a qualified anything, Maya. Oh, and by the way, I heard the suspect faced her fair share of harassment too. 
And from the sound of it, it got pretty ugly for her. Hmm. So even though this incident could cause a huge scandal for the company, it might be a boon for those who oppose their marriage to begin with. After all, with Ellen's arrest and everything, and everything, the marriage is most definitely off now. So that seems oddly suspicious. All right, we're done talking with Emma for now, and we will—we uh, have to start examining stuff, and we'll do that in the next video. So I'll see you guys then.